Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, happy uh, Vaisakhi uh, to everyone celebrating. So in this video, we are going to be using BERT for multi-label classification. So BERT, right? BERT is an open source model that was introduced by uh, Google back in 2018. BERT stands for Bidirectional Encoding Representation from Transformers. So uh, why bidirectional, right? Let me just give an example. Any, uh, a, a language modeling, a language model can be of two types. It can either be auto regressive or it can be auto encoding. It's auto uh, regressive when the model has access to either side of the blank. It can know what's there before the blank or what's there after the blank. Blank in, in this case is the word uh, that has been left out. Whereas auto encoding has access to both the sides of the blank, meaning it, it has access to the overall context of the whole sentence. Uh, rather than having to having access to either side of the blank. So let me give an example. So uh, a, a sentence would be, if you don't dash at the sign, you will get a, a ticket. So here you see where the blank is. If you don't blank at the sign, you will get a ticket. So here the auto regressive model will have access to only either side of the blank. So in this case, let's, let's, just, let's just say it can have access to on the left side of the blank. So the auto regressive model will only know that if you don't dash at the sign, so it'll, it'll only know the words before the dash, whereas auto encoding model will know everything like even before the dash as well as after the dash. So the auto encoding model has more access to the overall context of the sentence that makes it perfect for natural language understanding tasks. Whereas the models that have access to either side of the blank are good for natural language gener generation tasks. That's where the term generative AI comes from. So that's why uh, we are going, we are um, we are going to be using BERT for multi-label classification because it is good at, good at uh, natural language understanding tasks. So let me just share a uh, Google Colab no notebook that I have prepared uh, to sh show and go through uh, and, and where, we'll, where we will use BERT for multi-label classification. So here, as you can see my screen, first I've just uh, loaded the, uh, the packages that I'll be needing for uh, this notebook. Uh, we'll be needing transformers from Hugging Face library and um, all sorts of scikit-learn and pandas. So yeah, so let, let's just have a first glance at the data set. What are we trying to do here, right? So I said we are, be, we are going to use BERT for multi-label classification. So here we have a data set of anime. It has been taken from uh, Kaggle. So here, given the name of an, uh, given an anime and the overall description, we'll, we are going to try to predict what is the genre of an anime? And here you can see in the data set, the overall genre can be uh, multiple genres it can have. So that's why it's a multi-label classification problem. So we'll be using features like the, what is the synopsis of the anime? This is the overall description, what the anime is and features like who's the producer, what date premiered and what is the name of the anime? So given these three, four features, what will be the overall genre of the anime? So we are going to do this by using BERT. We are going to fine tune BERT on this data set and use it for our specific use case of predicting the genres given the overall description of the anime. So first things first, we'll, we'll try to perform some cleaning on, on, on the data set where, we'll take, uh, where I have taken some uh, columns uh, uh, for, to to uh, to get the overall description of the anime. So I have what I've done is I have taken the name of the anime. I have taken the synopsis. I have taken the producer. I have taken what the source was and and when it premiered. So here you can see uh, all these. We have all these features: the day it premiered, the source, uh, the synopsis, and then I'm going to perform some cleaning where I'll just remove the. Uh, the overall, uh, like the non-printable ASCII characters that might be there in the synopsis or in the day it premiered. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm also removing some white spaces as well as removing the non-printable characters in the generated, uh, generated description. So after doing that, this is how our finally cleaned uh, uh, column looks, which I'm naming uh, it as generated description. So uh, the first is the name of the anime. Cowboy Beep is a TV show, as you, as you can see here. And... The synopsis is in the year, this thing, and it, it source is original and it premiered in this thing. So now, uh, now that we have our generated description, we are going to try and uh, predict the genre. That's why we don't have genre in the uh, generated anime description, because that's the thing we are trying to predict, right? So here I have created a new column for our entire data set called generated description, which will, uh, which will hold the overall description that we have 
uh, that we need to perform this task that has been uh, that has been done in this uh, uh, this segment. So uh, all in all, I'm trying to generate a, a blob of text per anime, which will have the synopsis and a couple of other features that will help it predict the genre. So now let's now just let's have a look at the genre. So here I'm just using a, 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 a list comprehension to see what all genres are there for the first row. So here you can see all genres, uh, genres for genres in pre-merged uh, anime genres for genres in genres dot split. So I'm splitting uh, this by uh, the comma that has been applied, and we can see uh, there are uh, three uh, uh, the three genres for the first anime cowboy beep that beep that we can see here. Which is action, adventure, and comedy. Now I'm going. I'm going to generate uh, the the entire unique labels that exist for all of our genres. So, like in 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 the in the entire data set of sixteen thousand uh, rows, what all the what all are the unique genres that exist? So here we can see there are forty two uh, unique genres that exist: action, adventure, cars. Uh, and this is what this uh, segment of the code does. And now we are going to assign labels to our genres because. When you load the model from uh, the Hugging Face uh, libraries, the model uh, should should have labels since the since it doesn't understand uh, uh, messages, it it understands numbers. So that's what we are doing here. We are using, we are using a dictionary that will store uh, the the that will assign labels uh, to our genres. So action will be assigned one, and uh, the and then adventure adventure will be assigned two, depending on uh, on this uh, segment that we have used here. So now that now that we have performed our basic cleaning, we are going to use uh, we are going to use uh, the Hugging Face Transformer library and use our uh, BERT model for uh, this uh, sentence classification. Uh, so here uh, we are going to import auto model uh, sequence classification from Hugging Face as well as the auto tokenizer, and we are going to use distal BERT, which is a light weight uh, uh, model of BERT because uh, because of the GPU limitations we have on Colab. So, and the problem type, as I said, it's multi-label classification and then the number of unique labels and uh, the the ID to label and the label to ID, which is uh, which is sort of required, uh, which is sort of the way how you use these models from Hugging Face. You need to assign labels to your, uh, to your output variables in case they are not in the form of numbers. So now we are going to do two things, right? Now, since we have cleaned our overall uh, our data set, like in the beginning cleaning has been done now, since the model, uh, uh, the way BERT was trained, it, it we have to tokenize our input text as well as we have to uh, convert our output text also the label in a way that the machine can understand that the way how BERT can understand. So this is what I'm I'm, I'm doing here. I'm I'm loading the tokenizer from BERT, which will basically tokenize the generated description uh, that I uh, that I got here. So it's going to tokenize this part which tokenize is nothing but it'll, it'll vectorize this entire blob of text into a sequence of numbers that bird can understand. And the other uh, uh, pre-processing will, will perform is one hot encode the our output labels. So in the, in the first case, uh, if, uh, if you see a cowboy bebop is, is the anime and the, the genres are action, adventure, comedy. So it's, it's going to assign one uh, for, um, it's going to assign a sequence of ones and zeros for these genres, so wherever in 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 the forty two genres, right? Wherever uh, wherever these genres exist, it's going to assign a, a, a one, and wherever they don't, it's going to assign a zero. So this is how uh, we'll make Bird understand our uh, overall uh, 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 overall architecture of uh, uh, for this data set. So right, you can see we are using the the pre process function here, which takes in examples and the text column. So two things here: uh, vectorize your uh, input input. Uh, column and one hot encode your labels. So that's what we are going to use. And we are now, we, we since we are using the Hugging Face library, we are going to import the uh, data set library from Hugging Face, which will uh, kind of, which aligns with how, since we are using Hugging Face's uh, Transformers library, uh, the data set library makes it easy and streamlined for these machine learning tasks. That's why we are using, um, we, are, we are going to assign our data set uh, uh, to, to the Hugging Face uh, data sets li uh, library. So here you can see, we are going to put in uh, the synopsis the genres and the generated uh, description. So here uh, we have already loaded it, and as you can see, uh, the, the the we are going to uh, we have converted our data set into test and train, and uh, the 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 train data set has twelve thousand rows, followed by test, which has three around three thousand two hundred and forty two rows, right? And here we basically apply uh, our pre-process function to this 
uh, to this data set where we are going to apply the pre-process uh, function to the labels. As I said, the labels will uh, be one hot encoded as well as the generated description will be tokenized. So here you can see the output that comes out of uh, the description encoded data set. The input IDs are the ones represent our tokenized input text, the tokenized generated description for the anime, whereas the labels uh, denote the one hot encoded uh, uh, labels for the, the for our data set, right? And the attention mask basically uh, is, is that comes from uh, uh, that comes from the uh, from the description encoded data set is it basically denotes the padding token. So what happens in if 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 you read the documentation of BERT and and generally a lot of these uh, LLMs, uh, each blob of text should have a constant uh, length. So meaning like you, if, if, if there's a token for, uh, for, for, for one anime, the, for the next anime, the, the length of the token should be constant. So this is what the attention mask denotes. Uh, it's, these are basically called padding tokens. If you look at Hugging Face's uh, uh, trainer library, you'll, you can get more information about this. So I'm here, I'm just viewing the first two, how it looks. So as I said, right, uh, the input, the input IDs uh, uh, look like this. So, th so for the first uh, row, uh, this is how the text has been vectorized using our pre-process function. And here is the uh, end, uh, attention mask, which denotes the presence of a padding token, where if if, if the if, if the length of uh, the blob of text is not constant, uh, we we itself add some dummy tokens so that we adhere to uh, how BERT uh, was trained. Like we adhere to the literature that was uh, provided by BERT. Uh, ensuring that we follow the training practices, right? And here, and the final output, uh, the, the labels. So here one indicates, maybe this indicates action and zero indicates the genre that uh, the first anime probably didn't follow. So here, now, now we have basically performed all our pre-processing steps. And now we are going to uh, use some uh, uh, metrics to check and predict our, uh, since, our uh, since, uh, since our model has been, uh, 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 since, since, since we have done the pre-processing, now we are going to define some uh, accuracy metrics to check our performance as well as uh, train the model. So here we have used uh, a new, uh, the standard uh, ROC, AUC, as well as accuracy, as well as the Jacquard score. So we are using here, accuracy might not be a good metric to predict what the overall, uh, the overall accuracy of the model is because accuracy will tell you if you look at the data set, right? So here, if the models here, because we have multiple labels, uh, if, if, so if the model says, uh, here, you, here you can see we have like seven labels and if the model says it's just, uh, if the model says, uh, the output is action and adventure accuracy will probably say the accuracy is zero, right? Because accuracy just depends on one metric. But if you, if you use something called Jacquard, Jacquard score assigns like a range of uh, values from zero to one, uh, and it'll tell if, 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 if the model says action adventure and comedy for this particular genre, uh, it'll give a accurate, it'll give a score from zero to one instead of just completely zero, which accuracy would have done. So Jacquard is a, is a metric that you should be using for multi-label classification instead of, uh, accuracy. So now that we have loaded our metrics, we are going to perform, uh, our basic training using the hugging faces, uh, trainer, uh, framework. So there's a document detailed documentation about how to use this by a uh, hugging face. We're going to use the trainer framework, which is a very popular framework for training large language, uh, uh, models using the hugging faces, uh, trainer, uh, library. So, uh, we, 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 follow the documentation. We, we, we do the necessary imports and we are going to use data collated with padding, which will basically uh, take care of uh, those attention masks uh, so that the, 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 the length of the uh, each blob of text uh, remains constant and we uh, uh, comply by uh, BERT's uh, uh, training uh, uh, rules, right? So we, 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 we pass our, uh, the, uh, the, the genre prediction as well as the Jacquard score and we set our input parameters and we pass our data set, uh, the, the train as well as the test. And now we finally uh, train, train our model. So the, it, it, it took like around 50 minutes to train this model on this uh, Google Collab, that, uh, the free version that I'm using. And you can see the Jacquard score uh, kind of increasing as, uh, as the epochs uh, uh, produce. And now finally, we'll, we will be using the classify library from Hugging Face to sort of pre uh, do the predictions. If you recall in my previous video, one of the videos that I made on, uh, uh, on using the Reddit API, I have talked in detail about how to use the uh, Hugging Face's pipeline library for making uh, pr uh, predictions. So here we, 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 we load our tokenizer from the pre-trained model as well as the 
the the model that we have just uh, fine tuned on on our data set so here we fine tuned the model on our custom data set and we are going to use that i'm going to set a threshold of 0.5 meaning if the model is uh, only confident uh, more than 50% then only uh, it should give me uh, uh, the the result and then i'm also printing the actual labels to sort of do a comparison so here you can see uh, for the uh, the output right so for one punch man the model said that it's 98% sure that it's comedy it's 88% sure that it's a superpower genre it's 84% sure that it's action genre it's and it's 76% sure that it's a parody whereas the actual label said it's it's kind of close to what the actual label said as well it didn't probably uh, provide super uh, natural but uh, yeah given given the limitations we have on the gpu as well as the accuracy i think the model performed fairly well so yeah this was it for this video uh, I, i just wanted to show how do you use this open source uh, model for uh, your custom fine tuning tasks and uh, i hope you learned something from this video let me know if you have any uh, questions below i would like to uh, thank uh, 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 like uh, uh, sinan osdemer i've been following one of his uh, books on large language modeling and i urge all of you to read it and a, a greater part of this video has been inspired from the book that i've been reading and i'll i'll be i'll, be, I'll make sure i i link that uh, book in the description section as well so have a good day everyone and i'll see you in the next video thanks bye bye